by the silence of good men. Silence is golden, well, that's what they say. So good men stand silent and all of us betray. Watching from the side, careful to cover the fears that they might hide. Don't have to tell lies or reach a helping hand, but their silence speaks across the whole land.
which is on the second floor, so that I could just wash out one of her jumpsuits. And then I came downstairs, and that's when I saw it. It was here. It was, it was right here. Oh, shouldn't you close the airports? What about roadblocks? What do you do first? One moment, sir. Is this where you found it, ma'am? No, no, I found it right here on the stairs. Is it, is it eight? Yeah, they said they were going to call between eight and ten. What time is it? Honey, it's only a bit after six. After you found this, what did you do? I ran back upstairs to her room, but she wasn't there. She wasn't in her bed. She, she was nowhere. Honey, honey, honey. Oh, no. They're going to call between 8 and 10, and we have to follow their instructions to the letter. It says if you want her to see 1997, you have to follow our instructions to the letter. Honey. Oh, Jesus. They're going to cut off my baby's head. What? Read it. Read it. It says that if we talk to you, she's going to be my Honey, 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 easy, Tessa, easy. Come on, honey. Call the Reverend Hubbard's side. Don't, don't you want to talk to him? I want to talk to my baby. Come on, honey. Let's call Priscilla. Good night, honey. Almost everyone's on vacation. Okay, Art will be called. Linda, hi, Bob Whitson. Uh, listen, lucky I got you at home. We got a report of a kidnapping of a six-year-old girl, and there's a ransom note. Just come in. I need Patterson and Trujillo. When was the last time you saw her? Uh, 10.15 last night, 10.30. I went in right after that and dressed her and sang her a song. And you didn't see her after that? No. All right. This is her room. Did you hear her? I mean, did you get out of bed for anything? A snack, a glass of water, the bathroom? Our bedroom is on the top floor. It's in the front. This is the back. It's hard to hear. Oh, honey, 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 honey. This, is, this isn't helping. Come on, let's get out of here. Who else was in the house? Uh, just Burke, our son. Where's his room? This is way in the front. Did he hear anything, do you know? He's still asleep. Could you show me his room? Should I go to the bank? The kidnapper told me to go to the bank. He wrote that she's safe and unharmed. Of course, he has to say that to get his money, doesn't he? This is Sergeant Whitson at Boulder PD. I've got a kidnapping, and I'd like an FBI liaison. Make sure he brings the protocol manual. <laughs> Sergeant Whitson, I want to read you what's in the ransom note. Um, it's addressed to Mr. Ramsey. I mean, not Mr. John Ramsey, Mr. Ramsey. Um... $118,000. Oh, John, when coming. Patsy called, I thought you'd had a heart attack. Patsy? Patsy? What is it? What's wrong? What is it? Um, immediate execution. That's one. Beheaded. That's two. Uh, she dies. She dies. She dies. She dies. Yeah, it's signed Victory SB. No, sir, I, I have no idea. Well, uh, a bunch of their friends have come up. Yeah, altogether, they threatened to kill her six times. Is Patsy all right? She's in there. Yes, sir. Did you get a hold of Arn? On her way. What about Larry Mason? Where's he? He's also on vacation. We'll get him in here. Okay. Take this immediately to Commander Eller.
at the Holiday Inn, make sure that the parents are separated. We need to interview all these people. Yes, sir. Wow, point of entry right here, right? Huh? Mr. Ramsey said to really. Linda. Is this everyone? I don't see Mr. Ramsey. Um, let me check in the front. Can we take off before dark? I'll, I'll also have my older kids. Maybe my brother and Patsy's sisters. Mr. Ramsey, excuse me. me. Get up into. Excuse me, sir, Mr. Ramsey. Uh, Mike, I'll call you back. Yes? Sergeant Larry Mason, where are you going? Uh, I was talking to my pilot. I want to take my wife and my son to Atlanta. I'll feel safer when we're out of Boulder. Well, Mr. Ramsey, you can't leave Boulder. We have a lot of unfinished business here. We need to talk to you. We've arranged to put you and your wife up at a nearby motel. We can all talk there. Motel? No, Mrs. Ramsey and I won't stay at a motel. The Fernies said we could stay with them, and that's what we'll do. The Fernies. All right, well, then we can all talk there. Can you give us a day? We just lost our child. All right, okay. We'll see you tomorrow. Sir, we need everyone to vacate the house now. you some words. I need your help. I need you to print these out for me, okay? I'm going to read these words out and you need to print them out for me, okay? What words? Just print mister. Go ahead. Try it the short way, Linda. M-R dot. That's great, Linda. That's great. Now, print the word attache. You, you need me to spell that for you? Uh-huh. Okay. A-T-T. That's right. A-C-H-E. Great. Great. And now, beheaded. What? Beheaded. Be no! No, 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 it's just a word. It's just a word. It did not happen to her. It's just a word. Go ahead. So, let's see what Trujillo has for us. The music. We should be all wrapped up by around 9.30. We could turn the house back over to the family then. Are you sure? It's a big house, and it's at night. I've seen it take two to three days to search a house a fraction the size of this one. Our people are done. Now, have you checked all the rooms? There's 15 rooms upstairs. There's six more in the cellar. The crime scene tech says they're finished. 
They checked the child's bedroom and the cellar room where she was found. We also dusted the doors and the windows. Plus, we bagged all the evidence. We're done. Why don't you secure it and come back tomorrow? I mean, you don't want to hand the house back to the family, right? And then find out we missed something vital. The techs are satisfied. Well, I'm not satisfied. Tom. Tom. Have you cleared this with Dellert? Tom. Hey, Pete Hostrom, please. Hi. Yeah, it's me. Uh, listen, you got to talk to El.
repairing a hit. The tiny body of six-year-old Jean Benet Ramsey seems light compared to the heavy hearts at her funeral. Her parents, John and Patsy, brought her back to their former Atlanta church, a place they used Someone to call home. Family held one another tight, huddled close. Morning. Patsy told me that Jean Benet and she sang together wherever we go, whatever we do. We're gonna go through it together. Jean Benet was found murdered in her Boulder, Colorado home the day after Christmas. The Little Miss Colorado beauty queen's life ended in strangulation. Today, her casket parted through. And then, uh, I just realized that was the last time I heard her voice. It was just baking cookies and baking jewelry. You can't have lawyers talk for you. Oh, no. That's for her father. You do the talking. Cleet, you do not grasp our situation. We have been hammered by all kinds of ugly rumors. I'm sorry. But when you go and hire lawyers and a public relations representative and you refuse to talk to the police, you hand people the perfect opportunity to think the worst. You have to go back to Boulder and cooperate with the police. Sleep, please. This is unthinkable, John. Don't hire lawyers before you talk to the police. What will anybody think of parents who defend themselves to attorneys when the body of their murdered child John, is barely cold? John, please. please. Just get away from my door. Don't anything by shouting. The top Boulder legal expert warned yesterday there was nothing inappropriate about John and Patsy Ramsey leaving the state to attend the young beauty queen's funeral in Atlanta. And now today's yeah, Dad, the great thing about narcotics is that there are no mysteries. I mean, the only question is what day and what time the dope shipment arrives. Hey, Karina, is this steak almost finished? Because I gotta go in like an hour. I thought what you really liked about narcotics was running around in those silly disguises. First time I met him, I actually thought he was a hippie burglar. He'd be a great burglar. Oh, thanks a lot, Dad. Uh oh. And Shane Foley's in at the control. Here you go. Thanks. Go. Oh, Karina, medium rare. Actually, I think you would have made a very bad burglar. Always dropping things. Commander Elder, please. Steve Thomas. Hi. No. Yeah, I'll put it on right now. All right. Yeah, can you remote? What channel is CNN on? 17. 17. Settle uh, For our grief to resolve itself, we now have to find out why this happened. There's been some question as to why you hired a defense attorney. It, it, it's not just an attorney. We're also assembling an investigative team. I want the best minds this country has available to help us resolve this. What is he talking this. about? We're the investigative team. Well, what is he talking about? Outsiders, outside your family, or circle of friends? Yes. Our family is a loving family. It's a gentle family. We have lost one child. We know how precious their lives are. Please interview you. All day on the day of her death. For hours, they asked us questions. There is a killer on the loose. Absolutely. If I were a resident of Boulder, I would tell my friends to keep... Your baby's close to you. Oh, for God's sakes. Oh, turn it back on. I want to hear this. What's there to hear, Dad? I mean, they're too deep in grief to talk to us, but they could talk on TV? I mean, they could go on TV and talk and talk and talk. I want to hear this, Steve. Fine. At least John Bonet will never have to know cancer or the death of a child. Yes. There's a killer on the loose. Keep your children close. They make me sick. Oh, I don't know. It's it's as dumb as hell, but they've just lost a child. Now, maybe they're not thinking smart. You believe them? Well, I don't know if I believe them or not, but I, I don't disbelieve them either. Excuse me, were you in Jean Benet's class? 
Sweetheart, what's your name? Tell us your name. Did you ever play with Jonathan? Let the kids into school, folks. Please stay back. And what's important is you know all of us are here for you. And don't be afraid to come talk to us. That goes for parents, too. Nobody is too busy for you, okay? Yes, Jillian. Well, we live two blocks away from John Bonet. What if the bad person comes to our house? I promise you, he won't. I can't even remember when something like this ever happened before. Nobody can. Tonight, you should all feel safe. Yes. Yeah, John Bonet's parents could have told her that, too. That's true. And they would have been right. This is a rare occurrence. Now, I think it might be a good idea if we made some drawings about our feelings, okay? While police try to solve this crime, people in the community wait to hear answers. One woman stopped by the house on her lunch break today to place some dried sage near the family's home. It brings up a lot of issues, and it, it brings a lot of hurt, anger, um, that somebody could take somebody else's life, especially a little girl that had her whole life ahead of them. Boulder's mayor felt compelled to attend the news briefing. People in Boulder have no need to fear that there is someone wandering the streets of Boulder has, has been portrayed by uh, some people, particularly in talk radio, uh, looking for young children to attack. Boulder is safe. It's always been a safe community. It continues to be a safe community. She admits, though, she's received no information from police, and she's basing her reassurances on media reports that there was no forced entry to the home and that the killer probably has to know the layout of the house fairly well. The detectives expressed frustration about conducting an investigation under the spotlight of the media. Older citizens we talked with seem more interested than fearful of the case. Now, Professor, you teach criminal law at the university. What do you make of the fact that John and Patsy Ramsey have gone and hired separate lawyers? Oh, I wouldn't make too much of that. It's really not unusual for husband and wife to have their own lawyers. Under the law, they're not treated like a unit. They're separate individuals. It's possible that their interests might even conflict. But don't you think it makes them appear more suspicious? Yeah, out there in the world, people imagine that they ought to distrust someone who hires defense counsel. They imagine that criminal lawyers are only for the guilty and the innocent don't have any need for them. But that's a mistake, a foolish mistake. I'd say she behaved like a mother under terrible stress, but is it innocent stress or guilty stress? I couldn't tell. Ellard's group seems to have made up their minds as one Ramsey or the other. Pray not.
game you played in the tub? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did you ever play doctor in the tub? I don't know. Did you and Jean Benet have any secrets? I don't have any. It's okay to have secrets. I don't have any secrets. Are you sure? I have secrets with all my girlfriends. Honey, listen. Why don't you do mommy a favor? Go into the kitchen and see if they have any extra cookies. Hey, 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 hey. Give the nice lady back her badge. And say thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Excuse me, I wasn't quite done with her. You don't have children, do you? What's that got to do with it? Look, I was just trying to save us a little bit of time, all right? I was hoping that Megan would tell you that the day before Christmas when JonBenet was at our house, she had Megan all excited because she told her that Santa Claus was going to come visit her after Christmas. And I said, no, no, sweetie, Christmas is tonight. Santa Claus comes tonight. And she said, no, no, my Santa Claus told me yesterday that he was going to pay me a secret visit after Christmas. Bill, nobody's going to give you a hard time about a casual promise you made to a child at a party. I, I never spoke to John Benet about visiting her after Christmas. Are you sure you didn't say something like, I'll see you after the holidays? Well, one thing I've learned playing Santa, you don't make casual promises to a child. Why would she say what she said then? Because she's six years old. Six-year-olds like to brag. They especially like to brag about how tight they are with Santa. You have no objection if we talk to all the people you say visited you on Christmas Day, do you? No. Or if we talk to your doctor about your condition since your heart surgery? No. You wouldn't mind coming in to give us hair, blood, and handwriting samples? Why should I mind? I'm innocent. All right, all right, listen up, listen up. Ladies and gentlemen, the CBI Bureau just found a hair. And they found it on the white blanket the little girl's body was lying on. So, I want pubic and body hair samples from everybody. I want them yesterday. The sooner we match this, the sooner we're home. Heading into court, media attorney Tom Kelly argued the autopsy report of Jean Benet Ramsey should be made public. The right to know is the right to know today. The autopsy report contains several important details. According to several sources, because police failed to secure the Ramsey home until after the body was found. Another source said that the first detective on the scene, a specialist in sex crimes, was so busy treating the Ramseys as victims, she never took care of business. There is not one story that doesn't make me out to be the person that screwed everything up. It's not fair. Say the stories are lies. You have got to protect me. Linda. You know that my policy is we do not discuss details of investigations with the press. You're hanging me out there, Chief. You know, if it bothers you that much, Linda, I can always take off the case, or I'll just reassign you. Once again, the Boulder police are denying new reports that they are trying to negotiate terms for an interview with the Ramses. Look, whether you leaked this stuff to the media, or you gave it to the Ramsey's lawyers, it doesn't matter. We are not going to share information with you from now on. <laughs> he shut us down a long time ago. The CBI was told to withhold its lab results from us. Under Colorado law, we don't have to work with you. We can kick your ass out of this case. When our job is done, we'll bring the case material over. If you don't plan to share information, just how are we supposed to proceed? We do what we want. And if we need your help on the law, we call you. He lets his people get so obsessed with the Ramses, they won't even see another possibility. They ignore facts they don't like, they, they never discuss exculpatory evidence with us, and as soon as a, a suspect has a half-baked alibi, he's cleared! Kobe, do you understand what that means? You will never deliver what we need to prosecute this case. No sherry means the killer will walk. Is that okay with you? No, 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 that's not okay with him, just as it's not okay with us. Tom, what do we do? What do we do? We let Eller investigate. That's what we do. And when he's finished, we let you prosecute. <sighs> but in the meantime, in the meantime, why don't you and I hold a joint press conference and show the world that we're still on the same side? No, no, no. If, 
The police want to go it alone. Let Kobe go to the press alone. All right. Well, how about we set up a joint war room right here in the Justice Center with everything we have, computers, files, the whole nine yards, and our people and your people get together for status reports. What about that? So you're saying you will share your information with us? Well, I'm, I'm sure that Albert will want to limit accessibility to the computers to his guys, and he'll want to decide what information we pass on to you. But, guys, come on. We're going to be reasonable. We know sooner or later you're going to get the case. I don't want to depend on John Eller. Maybe we'll hire our own investigator to review the case from a defense point of view, see, see what we're up against. Well, I don't know if Eller will be happy about that. Well, then he won't. Look, to tell you the truth, one of Eller's own detectives suggested Lou Smith just a couple of weeks ago. Before he retired, he closed over 150 murder cases. He's a legend. We'll make sure he stays on your side of the field. Well, MSNBC's all over this. Who's handing this off to Rather? How long are we going to be up on the bird? Three minutes for the nightly news. What's that? Larry King was in the I have a, a gut feeling about this case that I, I don't usually get. And that is that we're going to solve this case. I am not going to file charges until I feel I have it. The road to justice will not be paved with shortcuts. I want to say something through you. I want to say something to the person or persons who committed this crime. To the person or persons who took this baby from us. The list of suspects narrows. Soon no one will be on that list but you. You have stripped us of any mercy we might have had at the beginning of this investigation. We are going to see that justice is served and that you pay for what you did. We will ensure that justice will be served for this community, for this nation, and most importantly, for Joe Manet. You did a great job, Alex, really Thanks. great. You did it again. You must know something that I don't know to sound so confident. I didn't know we were that close. I might have gotten a little carried away. <laughs> well, when making a profile, the FBI will begin by explaining to you that your daughter was at a low risk of being killed by a stranger. She was in bed, at home, in a good neighborhood. Both her parents are in the house. What stranger takes a chance invading a house under those conditions? And on top of
And then you went upstairs to say goodnight to her? Yes, to kiss her goodnight. I undressed her as well. <clears throat> John had just taken off her shoes. He then went downstairs. Burke was playing with one of his presents, and he, John went down to get him ready for bed. Did John Benet wake up? No. Not even when you undressed her? Kids sleep through that all the time. What was the last thing John Benet ate? Do you recall? Whatever it was that we ate at the Whites, I don't remember what it was. Did she have anything when she got home? Not that I remember. On the morning of the 26th, you said you got up around 5.30. What did you wear? A red sweater and black slacks. Here's a photograph taken of you at the Whites from the night before. Do you see anything unusual in it? No, not really. You see that I'm wearing the same sweater and slacks. They were just lying right where I had left them the night before, so... Then you checked John Benet's room. And she wasn't there. And you said you went downstairs to look for her and you found the note. Then you ran upstairs to Burke's room. Do you recall that? <clears throat> Is that what I said? It must be so. Well, you also said that when you first got up, you stopped at the second floor to wash something, then you went downstairs, found the note, and ran up to John Benet's room. Can you tell us which one it was? I don't remember. Either way, she wasn't there. She was gone. When you got to Burke's room to look for John Benet, did you turn on the light? I don't remember. Did you wake Burke up? No. Oh. So then he woke up on his own? No, he didn't wake up. He stayed asleep until John sent him to the Whites. You mean all this shouting and all this commotion didn't wake him up? No. <clears throat> Mrs. Ramsey, how do you feel about the fact that handwriting experts believe that you wrote the ransom note? I didn't know that. Do people believe that? Oh, why do you think the handwriting on the note looks like yours? It looks that way because it may have been written by a woman. <laughs> you think that this woman wrote it the way she did to make it look like your handwriting? I couldn't say. It's possible, isn't it? Do you think that's why she she used your pad to write the note on? My pad? Your pad was used to write the note on. It was? I, I, well, I don't know what to make of that at all. You don't? You heard your wife cry out. You ran down, you read the note, and you told your wife to call 911. Seems right. Uh, I couldn't swear. And your son was asleep all this time? Yes, until I woke him up to send him to stay with uh, Fleet White. And what was that? Around 7. After your wife called 911, she called the Fernies and the Whites to come over? Yes, and a few minutes later, the first policeman arrived. And then not long after that, John Fernie, the Whites, then Reverend Hoverstock. And you all sat there waiting for the kidnappers to call. Well, Patsy and I answered lots of questions from the officers, and we all tried to figure out what the note meant. I spoke to my older children, my banker, and around 10 I went downstairs to check on a window. Downstairs? Yes, uh, down to the cellar. There's a broken window down there, and I wanted to check it out. It was open. I may have closed it. Did you tell any of the detectives about this window? No. Why not? 
no special reason. I just didn't. When you went down there, did you go into the boiler room? No, I had no reason to. There's no window in the boiler room. Nobody could have gotten in that way. At one o'clock, when Detective Varn asked you to do another search of the house, why did you go straight into the basement? I didn't really think about it. She said, let's take a look downstairs. Well, did you know that Fleet White went into the same room that morning and saw nothing? How do you explain that he saw nothing? I just can't explain it. Just a few minutes after you found your daughter's body, you called your pilot to arrange a flight out of state. Why? Why'd you do that? I wanted to get Patsy and Burke back to Atlanta. I thought we'd be safer there. Well, you didn't feel safe here in Boulder? <sighs> My daughter had just been killed. Why would we feel safe? Mr. Ramsey, have you told us the truth here today? Yes. How do you feel about lie detector tests? If they're accurate, I'm for them. Would you take one? No. <clears throat> Did you kill your daughter, Mr. Ramsey? No. I did not. I loved her. I can't believe it was somebody we know. Everybody we know loved her. You need to relax, man. All right? Here, take some aspirin, man. Relax. He didn't kill anybody. But she couldn't put two sentences together without lying. And you know that's true. No, I don't know. Mr. Thomas, do you mind if we go back to a question you asked? No, not at all. During the break, I remembered what John Bonet last stated at the Whites. It was cracked crab. Nothing else? Nothing when she got home? No pie, no ice cream, no candy? No. She was asleep. Mrs. Ramsey, how would you feel about taking a polygraph? You mean a lie detector test? Right. I'll take ten of them. I'm glad to hear that, ma'am. Mrs. Ramsey, did you kill your daughter? I did not kill my child. Did you write the ransom note? No. Is this the lie detector test? No, no. It's just an example of how it might work. Who do you think killed your daughter? I don't know. I have asked myself that a million times, and I don't know. It... Maybe somebody who has a key. There's lots of people who have keys. Who, for example? The cleaning lady, for one. Oh, she has a pretty strong alibi. Well, the old couple uh, across the street, they have a key. They watch our house when we're away. Their alibi is good, too. Mm -hmm. The other cleaning lady, the babysitter, one of them might have done it. Well, which one do you think is most likely? I don't know. I just don't know. <sighs> Mrs. Ramsey, do you feel that the person who killed John Bonet deserves a second chance? A second chance? Pity, forgiveness. Oh, God, no. No. Thank you, Mrs. Ramsey. Ostrom. Ostrom. Let's go get a warrant now. What would you base it on? You're kidding. 
You heard the inconsistencies. You saw the behavior. She's a nonstop liar. Assume every inconsistency points to her. Assume every evasion and deception points to her. What's her motive? The law does not require motive. That's true, but when you have no witnesses, no forensic evidence that's wholly clear-cut, plus a mother who, who has no history of mistreating her child, you'd better have a motive. Anywhere else we could arrest her, but in Boulder, we can't. I'm sorry, Thomas. Don't be sorry for me. Be sorry for John Binet. I'm Patsy Ramsey, John Binet's mother. And I'm hey, what's wrong? Peter Hofstrom, that's what's wrong. It's the friggin' Bill of Rights. I'm appalled.
you honestly believe that I killed my best friend's kid? I promise you, we wanted to clear you. Well, then why didn't you? We weren't responsible for the wording of the release. What do you mean, wording? Hunter? Look, Alex Hunter thinks that Patsy Ramsey did it too. He just doesn't think that Eller can deliver the goods. Has he given up on the idea of getting rid of Eller? <sighs> no way. He wants him gone now more than ever. Actually, uh, he's asked me to help. You? How? He wants me to look into some rumors, and if the rumors are true, then he wants me to write a story. What rumors? I don't know. Sexual harassment a couple years ago at the Community Police Consortium? <sighs> Alex Hunter asked you to look into that? Uh-huh. And do a story for the Globe? Yes. He hates Eller. But don't worry, nothing's turned up yet. Right. This little punk is just trying to impress us how close he is to Alex Hunter. He's pulling our chain. That's not true. I'm close to Alex. Oh, well, Jeff, if you're so close... Give him a call at home. Now. No. See? He's pulling our chain. Dial him. Come on. Dial him up. Now, Jeff. You're not a double agent for Alex Hunter, are you, Jeff? No. I'm just some guy that's caught in the middle. Hmm. Yeah. You know what? Maybe you could be a junior detective. Yeah. Our junior detective. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Are you serious? Because, because if I'm a junior detective, Shouldn't I have a gun? Hmm. You know what? Hmm. I'll set you up with a friend of mine. He sells Glocks below cost. Hey, you know what? I think Jeff's more of a Beretta man, don't you think? Maybe. Beretta, Glock. Yeah, welcome to the club. Alex Hunter asked you to look into that. Uh. And do a story for the Globe. Yeah, he, he really hates Eller. But don't worry, nothing's turned up yet. So what did you have in mind for this? Well, sir, we thought that when you play this for Hunter, he might see his way clear to stepping, stepping down. Hmm. Hmm. Why would he do that? Well, he asked a tabloid reporter to smear Commander Eller. Oh, well, well maybe I missed something. Why don't, why don't you play me the section where Mr. Hunter asked Jeff Shapiro to smear somebody, anybody? Because what, what this tape shows are two detectives who are so bent out of shape with loathing for the district attorney that they're going to rely on a bottom feeder like Jeff Shapiro to plan a little blackmail scheme. That's what this is, you know, it's a blackmail scheme. It's the truth. I don't care if it's the truth. My detectives do not plan extortion. Not if they want to stay in this department. The door's open. some rumors and if the rumors were true he wanted me to print a story what kind of rumors i don't know something about sexual harassment a couple years ago at the community police consortium <sighs> mark would you come in here please close the door Mark, I I've informed Mr. Hunter that effective immediately you're going to take over supervision of the John Bonet investigation. All right, all right. And John Eller will stay on as chief of detectives. And the police operations will be run from here, not the joint war room. Is that all right with you, Alex? That's fine, thank you. Hey, Susan. Is Alex around? He's busy. Oh, uh, could you just slip me in for one quick minute? I don't think so. Okay, I don't mind waiting. Jeff, he's not going to see you today. Oh, okay, uh, could you check his books and tell him when's a good time? Look, there's not going to be a good time. He doesn't want to see you again. What are you talking about? Sorry, Jeff. Come on, Susan. I don't want to be the one responsible for you losing your job because you didn't let me see Alex today. Go. Jeff, hey, the worst thing just happened. 
Luke's hunter's office and his receptionist told me. Well, when can we talk? Kobe told me not to talk to you. You, you were warned not to talk to me. He said I can't talk. Hello? Hello? Hey, Steve. Jeff. I think we must have gotten cut off. Turn Look, I wouldn't take... Hello? Hello? Now keep pushing to get the Ramsey Center for interviews. You do it in your first statement, and you keep doing it, okay? So no matter what question you're asked, you see, I can't answer that until the Ramseys talk, okay? Or meet with us. Right. All right. Now what you've got to get across is, Mr. and Mrs. Ramsey, if you don't cooperate, not only can't we solve this case, somebody's going to demand a grand jury. Raise the temperature. But don't be nervous. Is that a new suit? What's good? <laughs> First, we have reviewed and updated a case management task list to identify and assign tasks that need to be completed as part of this investigation. When I first took over, there were 72 tasks on my to-do list. The most important remaining task is to re-interview the Ramses. Have they agreed to that? We put in a formal request last week. Mr. Becker. We're waiting for a response. Mr. Becker, why is it necessary to talk to the Ramses again? Because we haven't spoke to them in six months. And during that time, we've had to contend with lots of new questions regarding lots of new information. Are they still part of the focus of your investigation? Are they suspects? We've not named any suspects. Ramses do remain under an umbrella of suspicion which is why it's critical that they speak with us. Is it true that you've asked the district attorney to impanel a grand jury to investigate the murder? Yes. A grand jury is always an option. I understand the press conference was designed to put pressure on the Ramses, but it, it's borderline unethical to convene a grand jury in this situation. What will you present? You don't have enough for a case. I'll go even further, sir. I don't believe either John or Patsy killed that child. It won't take a grand jury very long to figure that out. You'll end up with egg on your face. I'm not wedded to the concept, Pete. But let's face it, the Ramseys haven't talked to anyone for six months. Hold it. We're officers of the court, and that's not a valid reason to convene a grand jury. Our policy can't be the end justifies the means. Especially if they're innocent. How dare he insist that you be removed from the Ramsey case? How dare he? I wouldn't worry about that, Alex. As long as we keep investigating. Romer won't do anything. The governor's a politician, just like you and me. <laughs> well, what if we can't climb out of this big bog? Yeah, glug glug. Well, maybe there's hope. I heard John Eller's quitting. Can that be true? Yeah, well... Linda Art is suing him, Larry Mason suing him, so why stay? I'll tell you the truth, I'm thinking about leaving myself. I am. Oh, I'm so tired, Alex. And Mason and Art are also suing yours truly. And the rank and file hate me now. Everybody at the police station hates me. <laughs> and apart from you, I've got no allies left in Boulder. But I'm not going to leave till the end of the year. Not until the Ramsey case is finished. You think this will be done by the end of the year, you're dreaming? Uh, who's being defeatist now? Uh, you know what we have after 13 long months? Mm -hmm. Suspicions, indications, hints. We even have a few new clues. What we don't have is evidence. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. You know, I envy you and Eller. <laughs> I do. I'm caught between a rock and a hard place, and it's... It's crushing my head.
What the hell are you doing here, Steve? The Globes found a source who told us things that you do not want to be made public. Oh, son of a bitch. So they need your help with information about the grand jury. A any little tidbit, anything you heard around the water cooler, anything. Why should I tell them anything? Steve.
I remember hearing that John Bonet and Santa had agreed to meet that night. Now, if a stranger had come into her room, she would have kicked and screamed, but she knew Santa. And that is Bill McReynolds. Mrs. Ramsey, did you talk to your husband about the interview yesterday? No. You didn't talk about anything that I asked you or anything John was asked? No. You didn't say, how'd it go, John? Oh, for sure, but we never discussed uh, anything that was asked. That would be wrong. Um, did you ever own a stun gun? <laughs> yeah. Lou asked me about that a long time ago. Never. Now, I understand that women sometimes carry them for protection. Maybe Priscilla White would know. Shut him up. Ramsey is running this interview. There can't be another voice on the 911. Burke never came downstairs. He never talked to us while I was calling the operator. He was asleep the whole time. Mrs. Ramsey, you told the police that when you found the note, you didn't read it all the way through. Right, only a, a few lines, just up to the part where they said, we have your daughter in our possession. I will go to my grave with that phrase in my head. And you didn't read any further before calling 911? I don't think so. It's hard to be sure because I've had to copy it so many times, but on the day itself, I just read a bit. Mrs. Ramsey, what if I told you we had evidence that shows you're not being truthful? Let's see it. Well, we're not in a position to show it to you right now. Of course you're not. Mrs. Ramsey, there are only three people in that house that night. If you didn't kill John Binet, if your husband didn't kill John Binet, that would only leave your son, Burke. Pal, you don't want to go there. Don't start with that. I'm going to ask you one more time, Mrs. Ramsey, and please do not lie to me. Did you? You are going down the wrong road. Frankly, Alex, I don't, I don't see an alternative but to take this to the grand jury. I do see a case outlined against Patsy Ramsey. I won't press for a, an indictment unless there's a whole case there, but I certainly think we have enough to convene a panel. I don't. For two years I've been saying, give me evidence. If you can't, give me motive. If you can't even give me motive, give me prior bad behavior. And nobody, nobody has given me any of these. In fact, if the office decides to present this to a grand jury, I'm sorry, Alex, but I won't participate. It's just plain wrong to seek an indictment with this little evidence. It, 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 it would be a judicial burlesque. It would be. It sure would be. I need to brood on this. Lou, if you weren't so hung up in your damn imaginary intruder, you'd see that every sign screams Patsy Ramsey. You gotta be deaf, dumb, and blind not to get it. All right, you tell me. Why'd she do it? She lost her temper. Just like so many parents in this country, she lost her temper. She got tired of the smelly sheets and the stained blankets. She whacked her kid on the head, saw what she did, and, and, and lost her temper. Let me get this straight. This woman, this mother, lost her temper, hit her child on the head with a flashlight, knocked her out, panicked, covered it up by making a garrote out of her own paintbrush, and while the corpse lay in the cellar, went upstairs and wrote a fake ransom note three pages long. Why? Because she was embarrassed? That's right. Is that what you want me to believe? I sure do. No way. Not today, not tomorrow, not the day after, never. Come on, you guys. I mean, you're both so obsessed with this case, you can't see anything else. You shut your eyes to any piece that doesn't fit. No wonder this case is such a mess. If I was your boss, I'd fire you both. Eighteen months that my colleagues and I have, have worked on this case night and day. We were advised by the prosecutor not to speak to certain witnesses. We were forbidden to um, clear innocent people. We were refused search warrants and we were the victims of a campaign of misinformation designed to discredit all of us. 
and designed to destroy the career of our commander, then I think that until an independent prosecutor is 